2024 men's volleyball season preview. We have head coach Brian Rofer with us here. He picked up a red banner for this team last year, 20 and five overall, nine and one. You sir predicted that set number five would be fun out there in Iowa. Boy, <laughs> was it ever. So reflect a little bit on last year. It was quite the journey between coming in as your first year, going through a season where you split with Benedictine Mesa to start, you take a loss that no one will want to talk about to them at home, but then you picked up steam, ended up winning the GSEC regular season championship and finished out quite spectacularly in Des Moines. Yeah, it, it was um, it was a great journey. Um, fortunately, our guys bought in very early where um, our goal last year was to win the national championship. And going through, of course, it's always great to win the trifecta if you're going to win the conference, you know, in your tournament. But um, our guys stayed focused. They understood what our goal was. And, you know, the ups and downs just made us a better team. The journey, the adversity just set us up for the way we played in that final game. And, you know, just like I asked of our players, just, you know, trust each other, trust the process. And, you know, like I said, I trusted the process. I trusted our guys. And, you know, we had had the adversity prior to that and being down two games in the finals, we weren't playing well up to that point. And I knew our guys had a lot more in the tank. And it was just a matter of them realizing, you know, our journey was for this moment. And they stepped up and, yeah, we did what we did, and uh, you know, I, I couldn't ask for a better result, obviously, and I couldn't be more proud of the team that we had and, and the way we finished. Well, it was fun being out there with yeah. you. That was certainly a, a huge highlight of my yeah. short time here at Vanguard so yeah. far. Yours is even shorter. I'm surprised you stuck around. You could have retired 1-0. No, just Well, kidding. yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the, there's a lot of things that go go into coaching and, and where you want to be. I'm fortunate to be at this point in my career where it's about the journey and working with these athletes and these young men in, um, in this athletic department. You know, there's a lot of, like yourself, it's, all, it's always great to come into a, a, a place where it's about the passion of the sport. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of routes to go where you can go elsewhere, probably make more money financially, but as we start doing that, sometimes we lose the focus of why we do what we do. And um, you know, kudos to everybody in this athletic department in that win. It wasn't just about our team. It wasn't about our coaching staff, but yourself, our support staff. It, it's, it's huge to have that. And finishing the way we did at the end of the year, a lot of guys graduated, but knowing that you, know, you have this family around us, it's, it's difficult to leave but I love what I do. I love the guys that are here and the, the whole, you know, Vanguard athletic family, you know, meeting everybody in our situation who our offices are right now. Um, it's just a great atmosphere. And that's, you know, that's why I'm back. And, and you know, it's all about the wins, but uh, more importantly, the journey to get there. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the new journey you're about to set off on because 2024 the season's here you start playing this week you got two home games and we'll get into schedule and all that stuff in yeah. a moment but first a reflection a little you didn't spend a lot of time with them but it is a changing the guard for this team as the a bunch of the core group that was brought in when the program started were part of the championship yeah. last year and have graduated so Reflect a little on those guys and what they accomplished and what mark they left on this program. Well, I, I think coming in, you know, it's a it's a young program, but they're the charter class, you know, and and I think that had a lot to do with the way some of the guys that graduated and how they performed. They had been here, um, and it was a legacy they were leaving. Um, I know no different. I walked in here, you know, early, early in the season last year. Um, but there was also a lot of transfer guys that came in. You know, we had an, ex uh, an experienced squad, but you know, we were pretty much all new. There was me and I think four of our starters were first year guys with me. Um, but you know, to me, it really didn't make that much of a difference with the guys that had been here from the beginning because it's a new thing for me and new for everybody. And there was a learning curve. Um, you know, fortunately, the guys that are coming back with Will and, and Ryan, especially Chevy, which, you know, he came in at the end, you know, he was new, he's a freshman. So, you know, the culture that they developed is still here. So it makes my 
job as a coach much easier because I have these building blocks already in place. So the new guys that come in, um, of course, it's going to be hard to replace, you know, especially Kyle, uh, Cody with his leadership, um, and the way Ryan G performed in the, in the finals. Those are hard pieces of a puzzle to replace, but I think we got those pieces. So yeah, so I'm excited um, about this group. Cool. Well, let's talk then about who you got. So first off, Will Anderson was statistically second in almost every category. Second kills, kills for set, digs, aces. Talk a little bit about what you're expecting from this guy in the new season. Well, just watching Will in the fall right now, he's, he's made a step up into becoming an elite volleyball player. Um, not that he wasn't last year, but he's as good as any opposite in the country right now. Uh, I think the national team would be ignorant to not look at him. Um, you know, I, th I think that he has that potential. Like I said, he's as good as any opposite. And the way he's playing now, he's playing like a polished uh, veteran volleyball player. Um, if he continues doing what he's been doing in the fall this year, he's to be much better than he was last year. And like you said, he was pretty legit last year. So I, I you know, if we can keep him healthy. Um, he's playing with a lot of confidence, a lot of swagger, and he's earned that. It's not a cockiness, it's a swagger that he's earned to carry. And um, he's gonna lead this team and will probably go as Will goes. And I have no doubt that he'll be in a good position come April this year. Then you've got Ryan Smith back, yeah. the center. What's his you know, Ryan, right yeah, now? Ryan, you know, every, every, this, well, I can't say every year, I just know what I know from last year to this year. Last year he was injured early mm -hmm. and he came out, um, came out after that injury and his setting developed really, really fast, his release. Um, he's like one of those old baseball players, basketball players that will play themselves into shape. He, he came in, he plays on the beach a lot in the summer and his release was slow, but in the last couple weeks we've been kind of addressing that and he, he's becoming very, very good, very, very fast. Um, back to where he was at the end of last year, I think he's there. Um, I think he's a much smarter setter this year. He's running the offense really well the last couple of weeks. He's understanding more of the dynamics as a setter. And he's also in that position that I think that if, if he trains um, indoors year round, he could be a piece of the national team too in LA if that's what he wants to do. But I think um, the beach game is, I think, calling him. But, you know, he's gonna run this offense. And again, he, you know, he knows now when to go to Will and he knows that we kind of have to save him a little bit um, during practice and maybe some of the, if we don't need to use him necessarily that much, you know, we can maybe save his reps and, and his arm a little bit for the next couple of months. But um, yeah, you know, with Will and Ryan, it's a one-two punch. Ryan's running the team. He knows when to go to Will. We have a, you know, a guy that can close for us. And then, you know, we, we go to our outside hitters with um, Andrew Shevlin, who showed what he can do at the end of the year. And um, this year, now he's just, I think he's just starting to reach his potential. He's not quite there yet, but again, he's showing a lot of confidence at that pin spot. Um, and I'm sure if he played like this right now, last fall, um, he would have been playing the whole year, including the championship. But um, yeah, so, so, you know, losing Kyle last year, that, that was huge, but I think uh, Andrew stepping up the way he is right now um, will take a lot of that pressure off um, our team. And then we have Raisa who transferred in, who um, hasn't played a lot of volleyball in the last few months. And he, he's a great volleyball player and he's starting to show that every day in practice now. So, you know, nothing against Kyle, um, but I think we have the pieces to, to kind of shore up that spot. Um, you know, in the middle we lost Cody who was kind of the spiritual leader of this team. Um, I think Glenn um, taking mustache that spot, man. mustache man, 
he's now that he's going to get competitive reps because he just came in to serve last year. That's yeah. all he did, and he did it well. And that's a high pressured position to go in, mm -hmm. and uh, he was doing it well. And he'll get his his opportunity this year, and um, he's been playing well. I think he'll take over that spot. And then we have Micah um, Simbesma who redshirted last year, and uh, I think people be happy to see what he can do out there. Um, Unfortunately, we you know we lost a few players due to various circumstances, but I think we'll be okay. We just won't quite have the depth that we that I thought we would this year. Yeah. And then talk about some of the other a couple like Micah. There's Jacob and Caleb, a couple players that were with you last year yeah. but never got into action. And then you got in uh, outside of your Candles little guy. Um, uh, Rasa, Beach, yeah. oh, uh, um, Sean Nguyen, yeah. yes, and then uh, a couple of refreshments. So, who else did you bring in? Um, we brought in some players that were that are more of positional players. Um, we obviously losing Ryan uh, Jew. That was a big spot. So we're looking for somebody that can fill in at that libero spot, and uh, it's still kind of wide open now. Um, Sean Nguyen, he was a setter at, at uh, Long Beach City College, a very, very good setter. Um, I'd have no hesitation if something happened with Ryan to say that we could win with Sean's setting. But he's also shown to be one of the better passers, and he has such a high IQ on the court that right now he's our libero. And he's, you know, with the ability of, of Andrew and Reza to pass so well, it takes a little bit of the passing pressure off of him, but he came in as, as a pleasant surprise that um, we got him here as a backup setter, and now he's our starting libero. And um, having a guy that can dig and set at the same time yeah. is probably not too shabby. Yeah, it lets us kind of, you know, in, in volleyball terms, lets us kind of set in system when we're out of system. So we have a libero that can set really well when he's in there. So you can kind of give a little bit on the passing because of the other things that he does. Um, Caleb Malik is, is still battling for that um, as a returning libero, battling for that spot. Uh, and then Jacob um, Van Groningen, he was injured for a large portion of last year. He had knee uh, surgery and had kind of rehabbed back through it. And I think he's just now getting to the point where he can actually um, play 100%. And, now he's been serving really well. He's been hitting really well. His passing continues to improve, and I think in situations we'll be able to use him this year. Um, so you know, those are pretty much the returning players. Uh, we have uh, um, Matthew Campos, who has kind of solidified his serving specialist spot, and he's serving extremely well right now. So he'll be coming in and serving quite a bit. Um, Leilua Cruz is a freshman outside hitter who is just, I mean, he's physically quite, he's not quite there yet, um, but he's another one that's, that's passing extremely well, plays very good defense, and it could very well be he ends up being our libero by the end of the year. Um, but we'll see, you know, they're competing. Caleb Peters is a freshman backup setter. Um, he was our second setter until Sean, you know, showed up. Fortunately, like I said, at our at our doorstep. But Caleb's trains as our second as as our backup setter, and Sean is our libero right now. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of really good options that we have. Uh, Logan Finley's back. He's kind of playing a journeyman. Uh, he was a middle hitter for us last year, and now he's been playing some opposite to back up Will. Um, so yeah, there there's a lot of options. Guys are playing different positions. Uh, um, yeah, so you know Jensen Wright is here, and we're, you know he's another one kind of battling for that um, libero spot. So that's a spot th that we really need to to get better at, um, and I think that we'll, you know in the next couple of months we'll kind of organically figure that out because the best guys will just end up being there. Um, it's kind of like you just let them compete for those spots. So yeah. It's a smaller squad, not a lot of depth, but we have the guys to win, and it's just it's my job to make sure they're healthy and try to prevent the injuries. And um, it's not rocket science, you know. They continue to compete like they do. Um, and I tell these guys all the time, it's it's their team. It's not about me. I'm just kind of 
you know, remind them every once in a while to compete, to have the passion, and um, you know, you know, adversity will, will show its face, and we just deal with it, and we keep moving. And uh, these guys know it, and I, you know, it's kind of at a certain point, it's kind of like a snowball. And, and I think we as coaches give ourselves too much credit for what's going on out there. And sometimes if you let the athletes just do what they do, and if we recruited the, the personalities that we want um, to develop our culture, then it's just, you know, pass set, recruit, recruit, recruit. That's how it works. So well, recruiting. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> well, you seem to have got the squad put together. Let's talk a little bit about who they're playing against. Short non-conference intro yeah. with a couple games this week against Merced and Simpson, because after that, every team on the schedule is either getting votes in the NAI national poll or is ranked in the NAI national poll. And the GSAC has three representatives inside that top 10, I believe. They just really re-released the rankings, so I, the, the math I'm going off of was the preseason yeah. poll. You guys haven't played, drop from one to three, whatever. Yeah. Um, match against Benedictine Mesa again this year, so talk about the schedule. Well, I think, you know, uh, unfortunately, some of the teams that we had confirmed um, to play kind of uh, it, it didn't come to fruition for whatever reason. Some of these, the other teams backed out. Um, it could be because of what we did last year against some of the D Division One teams, and we are, are going uh, to play D1 next year. So whether or not it was, well, for whatever reason, I don't even want to go down that road. But, you know, I, I told our guys the other day that, you know, because we have a short schedule, I mean, we could have, and hopefully we can still schedule four more matches someplace. Um, every match becomes, you know, that much more important, especially because they're NAI teams. So th the way I explain it to them is that it's about opportunity to get into the tournament. And um, I tell them all the time, and, and a lot of them, you know, are starting to realize that the younger guys, that it's about the national tournament. You get your foot in the door and you can win the whole thing. And it, of course, it's great to win the, the conference it's great to win the GSAC tournament and you got to be in the hunt for all of those to get those opportunities so it's about developing the opportunities through the wins that we're going to have to get in these teams so any NAI team we have to beat on their conference whether it's conference or non-conference and the way the rankings as you know go is that you know we play Benedictine and we sh when we beat them they won't have the opportunity to come to, to go above us in the rankings. And um, since Masters already beat them, if we have a good outing against the Masters, then I would assume the rankings will bring us back up. But we can't drop games against teams like Merced or Xavier, and we have to, and it can't be close. We have to show how good we actually are against those teams. And um, in that way, we develop the opportunities to get to that national tournament. Um, you know, I'd love to have the trifecta, of course, and hopefully we, we do do that. But, you know, we can go, we can win the, the conference, we can win the tournament, we could go undefeated, but if we don't, <laughs> if we end up having one loss at the very end, it's really difficult to swallow that, that um, all those other wins suddenly don't mean that much. Although, you know, you look back and, and it, it is what it is, but at the end of the day, if you're an athlete and you graduate and you're an alum and you look back, you're not gonna see or remember the GSAC regular season win, the GSAC tournament win, you're just gonna see the red banner at, in the gym. And, um, you know, we'll, it'll be interesting to see what hangs in the Freed Center. Are we going the, the LA Laker route where only championship banners are hung, or are we gonna hang up, you know, conference things and that's not for me to decide but my my attitude is is that um, you know the banner that gets hung is the one that it shows national pro you know pride and uh, but that's that's not my call but that's my attitude so well hopefully at the end of this year you get to the national tournament again GSAC once again should be competitive yeah, it will be even votes yeah. after probably a year they would like to get last year the Masters did lose Nolan Flexen, but they're getting their top 10 teams so far to start yeah. the year. OUAZ is ranked in the top 10. 
uh, Conrad Stokolinski or Stokolowski, yeah. however you want to say his name, is back for Menlo to make them a tougher team. Arizona Christian played hard at the end of last year. How do you see this conference shaking out the end of the season? Uh, I right? think the, the, the team that's going to surprise a lot of people is Hope. You know, you know, hope is almost like you didn't even want to go there and play last year. But you know, you go in and get with that attitude against them this year, and um, I, they'll be upsetting some people. They have a whole new roster. They got a lot of uh, transfers, um, community college transfers. So they're a whole different team. Um, you know, anybody could beat anybody in the in the GSAC. I think. Um, so you have to bring your game and and. You know, again, I think fortunately, if because we're one of the stronger conferences, we'll get more of an opportunity at the end. But you have to make those opportunities. You can't just say, okay, well, you know, we're going to go in as the at-large team. No, that's not what you want. You want to go in as the number one seed. Um, but if things don't happen, you want to, of course, just get there. Um, you know, Menlo will, will be good. It's important, I think, that we play them and play them very well this year because we're going to play them again next year. They'll be in there. And, uh, you know, people talk about us going into D1. It's, it's very much comparable to, like, our basketball going into the NCAA and playing the Kansas, the Kentuckys, the, you know, uh, teams like that. And that's what we're going to be doing. But Menlo is also going in with us. So, you know, we want to show them that we are still the powerhouse team in the NAIA going in there because when we go to NCAA, at least the you know Jessup is going into the same situation. Um, so you know we'll carry with us that that culture and that reputation. So it's important we beat those teams for that reason, but more so for this year. Um, you know the the more teams we beat, the better our chances are and. Um, at the end of the day, it's about the W's, and it's a lot more fun to win than to not win. And uh, all the teams are to be, you know, we, all the teams are going to be better this year. Um, I think the Masters could be a little bit tougher team this year because they're not so predictable. It was obvious last year that you know you knew where they were going, and um, we had the guys to kind of slow them down. Um, but you know. It's, we walked into Arizona Christian at the end of last year and, and didn't play well and, and lost. Mm -hmm. um, and we can't let that happen no. given the short schedule that we have and um, especially at the beginning. We got we to gotta do really well these, these games this week. I, I hopefully stressed enough to our guys that you, you know, th these teams historically are not the strongest teams. But we, you know, you, you have to play them as if they are because the wins against these teams will have a huge impact on what happens down the road. Um, so, you know, the, the, the conference is good. We got to come and play. And, you know, fortunately, like I said, it's a short schedule for us. But I would hope our guys realize that, you know, we practice for these moments. And if you can't get up for these for every single competition, knowing that you don't have a lot of them, um, then I'm probably not doing my job as a coach, getting them ready to play. So you know, we had a pretty we had pretty good outings in our scrimmages. Um, our exhibition match against Springfield was kind of showed what our potential was, and um, you know, I, I see some things in practice where you know I, I, we're going to be pretty good. So I, I'm excited. Two questions then left to go. Yeah. Is there any change in how you approach hopefully the end of the season? Because the G GSAC tournament, the NAIA tournament has moved to later in the year. So it's not quite as right after the GSAC tournament as it was in years past. It moved up to Dubuque, Iowa, which doesn't matter as much in yeah. arena. But is there any difference in that extra gap? It, it's. You know, it, I would rather play closer together because guys are more tuned in and focused. But I think with um, in, in the situation we are right now with, a, you know, a smaller squad with not as much depth, we'll kind of know um, at that point, you know, your weaknesses will be exposed. We'll know what we need to work on. And I think that a little bit more time will give us time to um, work on those things. Um, I wish it was more of a compact season. It's just, it just, it's just easier for everybody. But um, 
I don't think I'll approach it much differently. It's, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of glad at this point that we have that break because you don't know um, the physical condition of your guys. I mean, it, you know, you, you hope that everyone's healthy and um, at that point and you don't need to rest them, you don't need to have anyone healing, but it does give you that kind of safety net that I know, okay, we have a little bit more time. If something does happen, if our guys need to be rested, they'll have that time um, before the tournament starts. But, you know, it's a, it's a hard pill to swallow if you're not in it, yeah. but then it doesn't really matter anyway. So I don't think I'll approach it any differently. I mean, last year it's kind of, you know, we, Kyle been around for a long time. He's took a lot of swings throughout the course of his career. You know, last year I would have probably appreciated a little bit of a break for him. Um, but you know, there's still at the end of the at the end of the day, an old athlete in college is what 24. <laughs> so you know, it's just yeah, you know, keeping him injury free and healthy, going for a little bit longer of a period yeah. of time. Well, hopefully you'll have that break to gear up for another national tournament run. Last question then, because it is the last year of the NAI and you are going to go to MPSF and you will see the Hawaii's and the BYU's and all of them, but how do, have, has it been easy to keep your guys focused on this year? Because I imagine that you want to keep the focus on the chance to win one last title rather than we're just taking this as an opportunity to get ready to face the yeah. one competition. Well, uh, yeah. Our, our guys are just going to compete no matter what. I don't think they're looking necessarily at um, taking this step to the NCAA. Uh, with Ryan and Will, this, there is no, no NCAA for them next year, and I think they, they understand that, and they really don't. I'm sure they would love to play at that higher level, but this is it for them, and they understand that, and they'll have their opportunities to play at an elite level. Um, I think the younger guys aren't even really thinking about that. Um, it's more so... Probably, I, I'm probably the only one really thinking about that because of, of the recruiting, looking forward to the recruiting part of it and trying to, you know, get together teams that will be competitive in the next, you know, for the next two, one to two years and then maybe in the third, fourth years of these younger guys to actually make a run at, at something because um, we'll have the ability to go to the national tournament. So. You know, that's the whole moving is exciting for the program, for the university. For me, it's, it's you know, it's, it's just the ability to try to find these players that I know the physicality that's needed at the next step and to try to get some younger guys that um, are willing to work for that. But as far as this year, I think that, you know, we have the guys that we have and they're extremely focused on, I mean, it, it's, it's hard to win a national championship, let alone try to make a run for two. And I think they realize that it doesn't matter if it's NAIA, NCAA, AYSO, it's hard to win. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard to win back to back. And you know that being involved in, in athletics and, and sports and every coach here knows that. Um, you think things are going well and it's just like, it, it's hard. Even if you're the number one team in the country and you know, the women's volleyball team had a great, great run this past year. And, you know, when you get into that tournament, they were almost there, but it's just hard to win. And, you know, kudos to them, and, but it still stings. And I know that every one of them, you know, as, as much as um, JP is a wonderful coach, and I know she's very positive and looks at the, the value of what happened. And she's a competitor. She knows that they were that close, and it's just hard, so hard to get there. Um, so, our, you know, hopefully our guys know that. I understand it, and that's our focus right now. And, you know, the journey is there, and, of course, the adversity is there, and it makes us all better people in the long run, and it makes our athletes fearless when they, get, when they graduate and move on into the world. The journey between freshman year and senior year, and they'll look at the, you know, they come in here, and there's the hyphen, and they leave here, and the hyphen is what's most important. And, um, you know, they're all competitors and uh, all the journey part will help them in their life and I understand that and that's why we're here, but we're all competitors and, and the winning is huge and, and it's hard and it's difficult and um, I, I guess that's what I thrive on and uh, it's made me probably a better person, a better coach, the process, but you know, 
you always have to have that goal and strive for something. So. Well, it should be a fun year then because it kicks off on Thursday. So this year, once again, most of the home games will be at OCC or Calvary Chapel. Costa Mesa slash Santa Ana, right over the bridge of the 405 here from Vanguard. We do have a special though on Friday when Simpson's in town, you wanted to play in the forum. Yep. So if you are on campus, you can come check it out in probably the most intimate environment this team will play in in quite some time before we open the Freed Center come That's next right. year. So Thursday, Friday, the first two home games of the year. And then the schedule right quickly goes into yeah. the GSAC portion and off we go. So yeah. coach, we hope to see you pick up a lot of wins this year. Hopefully one of us, either Mike or I, are back with you in Iowa again. I hope so. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just see what happens, huh? We'll see what happens. If we get there, we have a shot. That's and right. show up at the forum because if you want to see how fast the balls move, it's a good good way to get a taste of it. So come out and support us. Thank you, Coach.